saints. Come on, let's give God some praise. If God's been good to you, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Can't nobody praise him for what he's done for you but you. You ought to give God praise every opportunity you get. Amen. The scripture says, let everything that have breath give God some praise. Hallelujah. And I know, you, I know when you woke up this morning, your body was full of breath. So you ought to be able to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glorify his name. We thank the Lord this morning for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. I know God's been good to me. Hallelujah. Brought me from a mighty long way. Yes. Seemed like a long journey, but yet God was faithful. Amen. Amen. And I thank him this morning for life, health, and strength and all that he has done. Mm -hmm. I praise him because I know, like Job said, my Redeemer lives. Come on, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. So I thank God this morning just for his mercy yes. and all that he has brought us through. Amen. Just thank him this morning. This morning we're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord as we already have been. We're going to continue in the word. And so let us take our attention to the book of Kings. While you're turning, 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. While you're turning there. Thank the Lord for all of the auxiliary leaders, members, those that continually do the work of the Lord. God bless you. We're going to begin, we're going to read the preaching verse first, and then we'll go back to the eighth verse to capture what all the context is around this verse. The 17th verse in the sixth chapter of 2 Kings, and it reads as follows. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Let's go back to the 8th verse just to catch a moment of what this is about. When the king of Amram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place, for the Armenians are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be on the alert there. The king of Amram be, became very upset over this. He called his officers together and demanded, Which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my king, my lord the king. One of the officers replied, Elisha the prophet in Israel, tell the king of Israel, even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom, Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back, he leads us at Dothan. So one night, the king of Amram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were the troops, horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him. Uh -huh. For there are more on our side than on theirs. And again, the preaching verse. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Uh -huh. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Uh -huh. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning for a subject, I would like to preach faith informed by vision. Mm -hmm. Faith informed by vision. We see in this story, the king of Israel and the king of Amram 
were at war. The king of Amram would always make a plan to how he was going to overtake the king of Israel. We're going to meet at such and such a place over yonder. But time and time again, the king of Israel got word from Amram, I mean from Elisha saying, don't go over there. For the king of Amram is planning to attack there. And finally, the king of Amram said, man, what is going on? Why is it that every time I plan something, it always fails? Which one are you telling what I'm doing? You know, my mom used to tell me that when she preached, somebody said, who told you what I did? <laughs> you can't get around God. Amen. And so they said, no, it's not one of us. It's Elisha, the prophet. He's telling the king every move you getting ready to make. Even the very things you whisper in your bedroom, God is revealing that to him. Oh my God, some of us, well, we, we really be paranoid, did we? we? And so, eventually they said, now this is what we're going to do. We're going to capture Elisha. Yeah. We're going to send an army to go and get him, and if we get him, we'll be able to overtake Israel. So he sent a great army by night. When the man of, or the servant of the man of God got up, he saw, man, look at all of these horses and chariots. Look at this great big army that has surrounded us. And of course, panic struck him. Mm -hmm. And he said, what are we going to do? I imagine some of us, like this servant, have asked a question. When things have went wrong in our life, or we get up and we find that we don't move as good, or we find out some bad news, or we're looking at a tough situation, the first thing that strikes our mind is, oh my God. going to do? You see, this servant of God in the natural, he represents us. Because the first thing we try to do is figure out how we're going to get out of this mess. What are we going to do? The man, the servant of the man of God, he began to recognize oh, I can't get out of this. They got us surrounded. I can't run fast enough. I can't fight them. Servant of God, what are we going to do? Sometimes your problems they make you seem like you're so small. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can accomplish in it. Seems like the more you try, the worse it gets. He said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You can feel the despair in his voice. You can feel his depression starting to set in. You can find that in his mind, he's starting to already see his own death. He's starting to see that this is the end. Then we're finished. We're, it's over with. You see, that's the way our mind is. Our mind is what they call heuristic. Meaning that it already comes to a conclusion. It doesn't take in all the detail, but it comes to the conclusion. If it's seen it before, you say, my end going to be the same. Let's, 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 let me give you a little story here to illustrate this. A couple of them. Well, let's start with this one. There was a lady named Elvita Adams. She was born in 1950. Well, Elvita Adams in 1969 had a child, one little boy. And in 1979, when the boy was 10, she lost her job. And you know back then in 1979, to lose a job, you don't lost the whole world. She was depressed. She was all tore up and upset. And she couldn't figure out how to get work. She was getting food stamps. But it wasn't enough to feed her and her child. And she became so depressed, she said, I'm going to kill myself. Her problem had gotten that big. Made her feel so insignificant. I'll just kill myself. So she wanted to pick the spot. Or what is she going to do? She said, well, I'm going to go to the Empire State Building. Oh, it's 102 floors in the Empire State Building. Oh, 1,200 and so uh, feet high. 102 floors. Well, 30 people had jumped from the 102nd floor 
and they all died. Mm -hmm. One man jumped from the 85th floor and he died. Mm -hmm. So she felt like this is a good spot to accomplish what I want to accomplish. So she went to the 86th floor. Surely if the man died on 85, 86 will do it too. Mm -hmm. So she climbed up to the 86th floor and it said that she climbed over the fence that keeps you from falling out. She climbed over and she stood on the ledge. Oh, I'm trying to tell you about when you don't have no vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you don't have God's vision, his divine guidance, your problem become bigger, magnified, and you feel like you don't have no way out. No, no real legitimate way out. Uh, you feel like that your life is nothing, that it's all over and it ain't even worth living anymore. Well, she climbed up and she climbed over and she stood on the, on the ledge there. Mm -hmm. And she jumped. She wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. And she jumped. Mm, 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 mm. But God! Come on now. Oh my God. And when she jumped, the strong wind began to blow. And it knocked her back on the 85th floor. She didn't even make it to the bottom. And knocked her back to the 85th floor. And she lived and she survived. Because now she can tell the story. He showed me that my end ain't gonna be like I thought it was. It's gonna be what God said it's gonna be. Hallelujah. Another story from the Bible. You remember Hagar, Sarah, Ishmael, and Isaac, and Abraham. Well, whenever Sarah got fed up with Hagar, she told. Abraham, mm -hmm. put this woman out and her child. Mm -hmm. Much like Elvina being evicted, she got an eviction notice, it's time for you to go. Mm -hmm. Even though you ain't got nowhere to stay, mm -hmm. it's time to go. So if the Bible says he gave us some food and some water mm -hmm. and sent her on her way. Oh my God. The Bible says that Hagar wandered in the wilderness. See, when you don't have no vision, all you doing is wandering. When you don't have no vision, you church hop. When you don't have no vision, you religion hop. When you don't have no vision, you faith the faith hop. When you don't have no vision, you take up what everybody says. You take on their opinions. When you don't have no vision, she wandered in the wilderness until the water and the food so the Bible says she took the child and she laid him under a bush in the shade. Mm -hmm. Says she walked over to another spot. Yep. In her mind had said, you know there's been a lot of people that have died in the desert. They didn't make it through. You know how the enemy will talk to you when you're going through something. You know your neighbor had the same thing and she didn't make it. You know your daddy had the same stuff and he didn't make it. So you know when you're out here in the wilderness and you ain't got no food and no water, you know you ain't going to make it. The enemy was talking to her. So she went over to the side. She said, I can't see my child die. I just got to get away from him. But then the Bible says the angel of the Lord spoke to her. He gave her a vision. He said, look over yonder. There's a well over there. Go get you some water and go take care of your child. I come by to tell somebody that when God gives you a vision, there's a well in your desert. There's a place for you to go. Because God said, I will make this nation I will be with your child just when you thought it was over. God is still blessing. He's still moving. He's still doing what he wants to do because he gives the vision and your faith has to respond to the vision of God. Oh, yeah. 
your son. Your faith must be formed by the vision. Jesus asked a question to his disciples. He says, who does man say I am? See, some of us are wondering and we're lost in other folks' opinion about Jesus. We're wondering and we're lost in the last sermon of whoever preached what. But Jesus said, who does man say that I am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're one of the prophets. But then he asked the question, but who do you say I am? What he was getting to was this. You got to come to a revelation of vision of who Jesus is for yourself. You can't just take my word for it. You can't take your mama word for it. You can't take the dog they shout all day as evidence of anything. But you got to have the revelation that Jesus is the Christ. He said, but who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said this, school didn't teach you this. Man couldn't give you this. See, I can preach to you, but I can't put salvation in you. I can talk to you about Jesus, but you got to know it for yourself. He said, man didn't tell you this, but it was revealed to you from God. Your faith has to be formed by your vision. It has to be formed by your revelation of who Jesus Christ is. The apostle Paul, when he was preaching to the Corinthians, he said, listen, I didn't come to you in just words only. I know you like the, the latest tabloids. I know you want to hear the latest fancy word or the fancy slogan, but I came to you in the power of the Holy Ghost that your faith might not be in man, but that it might be in God. You see, when you got a vision, your faith is in God. When God gives you a word, your faith is in God. When God lifts you up, your faith is in God. When God does something for you, your faith is in God. You gotta put your faith in God. So this young man, this young man, he was there. He said, What we gonna do? What we gonna do? What we gonna do? What we gonna do? Elisha said, don't worry. Yeah. Hey, there's more with us than with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Now, that's easy to say. You get some words. Yeah. You know how folk we just going to give you some words. Well, I'll just pray about it. It'll be all right. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. You take that medicine and let me know how it works out. <laughs> Elisha understood that what this young man needed is a vision from God. Yes, sir. Oh. Come on now, come on now, somebody. Yes, sir. At least you understood. This ain't no time for classroom theology. Yes, sir. Uh, at least you understood. This ain't no time for a five point sermon. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. Talk to me. At least you understood. I can show you better than I can tell you. Come on, somebody. At least you understood this one thing. Let me let you see what I've been looking at all along. Oh, come on, somebody. You see, you can talk to somebody, get in an argument with them over the Bible, but that's not the way to go. All you need to do is say, Lord, open up their eyes. Let them see what you showed me. You see, when he needs to pray, Lord, open up his eyes. He let the servant see what he'd been looking at all along, that he had no fear because God had the armies around him. Those things that come against you, that make you feel like they got you, you Open your eyes and see that God really got you. It ain't got you. You need to come to a revelation in Christ Jesus that He's the one that holds you tight. You don't hold on to Christ. You need to come to a revelation that the promises of God are not in you, but in Christ Jesus. You need to come to a revelation that you can't save yourself, but that Jesus Christ is more than able to save you. He can keep you. I hear the old folks say that He's a keeper. And Jesus is a keeper. I hear you say that he's able to keep you. He's able to prevent you from falling. I understand that God's grace is more than enough. I come to a revelation that Jesus Christ is more than enough. He will keep us through the hard time. He'll keep us through the bad time. Jesus Christ is faithful and just to keep all of his promise. Somebody in the house this morning, you 
show himself to you. And when he does, I know one thing about faith and form by God that you will be transformed. You will be transformed before the resurrection. You will be changed right now. And then when the resurrection comes, it will give evidence that you've been walking with God. How is that preacher? Because he said you would get up on the last day, on the last trump. You will get up and you will be transformed in the blink and the twinkle of the eye. Come on, saints, this morning. Those of you that got revelation, you got to give your God some Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. 